okay so good morning all of you sunday morning <clears throat> and as you all know in super sundays we have uh, called industry experts and uh, like persons those who have cracked or decoded some of the tougher examinations at the higher level so today we have miss vandita sarda with us so basically she has uh, topped cp1 actuarial practice in july 22 attempt and having known her personally so there is a myth which i would like to share about this subject particularly uh, like it takes a very long time to study this uh, subject but it's wrong you need to basically study it the right way and i'll not say that uh, course bahut hi chote time pe khatam ho jayega ya fir एक महीना डेढ़ महीना दो महीने में खत्म हो जाएगा बट हाँ अगर एक स्टिपुलेटेड uh, टाइम में पढ़ा जाए लाइक अराउंड फोर टू फाइव मंथ्स अगर अच्छे से पढ़ा जाए तो डेफिनेटली विथ कंसिस्टेंसी आपका ये वाला जो एग्जाम है वो क्लियर होगा ओके सो टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू आस सम ऑफ द वेरी कॉमन क्वेश्चन विथ यू मैम सो बेसिकली वॉट वॉज योर स्ट्रैटेजी टूवर्ड्स दिस सब्जेक्ट and how did you start and what was the uh, strategy before the exam at the exam hall uh, so can you please guide us on that sure so uh, first of all good morning all of you so my strategy for the examination uh, as i don't know maybe you all must be knowing that i had only two and a half months to prepare for my cp1 exam and uh, when i started preparing my first aim was to go through the material because obviously the paper was very new i did not have a lot of uh, helpful resources from outside whatever i had was the institute's material so my first objective was to go through the syllabus so that at least i have an idea what exactly do we have to cover after that after covering the entire material which you all know is uh, about 38 to 39 chapters after going through that i realized that the syllabus is too overwhelming so next what i did was i went through the revision notes which are basically the past exam question papers and what i personally felt when i started going through the revision notes was that it is very different from what i studied in the material so in the material when you go through the content then you will get a feeling that it's a completely theoretical paper where you have to memorize points and just put them down on a paper something like what we did in our uh, school level for the commerce papers etc but after going through the revision notes i realized that it is actually a very conceptual paper and it stands to its name which is actuarial practice it is actually a paper which prepares you for a uh, consultancy it prepares you for what an actuary does right from the back end modeling to the front end advising etc so uh, then i move on to the revision notes now what i did was i did not wait for the entire uh, content to get over before doing the revision notes as and when i completed the section at the same time i went through the revision notes so what happened was when i started reaching towards the end chapters let's say around chapter 30 to 32 that time i realized that just a skim through reading of the chapter is enough what is more important is to cover the revision notes and do as many questions as possible the first time i did the revision notes of course most of the questions i could not answer most of the questions uh, i thought that uh, they've given it for let's say six marks or eight marks but i could just generate points enough for three to four marks so i had to go through the points suggested by them i thought about more points i googled certain concepts which i felt that uh, maybe i should have a vaster idea about them and then when i moved on to the second revision or uh, second time reading of the revision notes that time the situation was much better because i had covered all 10 booklets and then i had a broader sense of what to write in the exam in my second reading again there were a few questions which still did not sit well with me so in those questions i just put an asterisk which i had to go back and revise so that was what i did in my third and final revision notes reading and honestly Uh, from my personal experience i would say that it was the revision notes which completely saved me most of the paper comes very similar to the revision notes in fact most of the core reading is already covered in the revision notes so even if uh, you just go through a summarized view of the chapters 
it is enough for you to clear the paper well because practicing questions is far more important than actually memorizing the point okay so uh, one of the common question that the students ask is uh, since we all know that cp1 is all about point generation in the exam because you might get a similar or maybe a new case study uh, and as we all know that paper 1 is also now totally uh, scenario based it's no direct question answer so uh, how to generate points and how can one retain the points uh, studied during the uh, preparation time okay so firstly i would like to say that in this portion there is a slight distinction between iai and ifom so if you go to for those of you who are appearing from the indian institute it is important that you all cover the iai papers as well because there is a certain uh, mismatch in the kind of questions they ask iii since we have offline examinations now or even during the covid time they had proctoring in their examination so they were still giving a few direct questions for example in my term itself they gave questions like five marks for write a note on algorithmic trading like just a one line direct question uh, or uh, there was a question on copulas that uh, how can copulas help but in ifoa if you go through the papers in the recent term specially you will see that hardly i think not even one direct question is asked usually all the questions which are asked requires you to apply the content you have studied and not directly since of course it's open book so they will not want you to directly copy from the book or just write the same thing in your own words so for retaining the point as i said when you in the very first reading because you all have this guidance you all know about this from the beginning it is better that from the very beginning when you are reading for the first time you start maintaining your notes and it is not important to write it down it is enough if you just uh, type out the common points the important keywords so i have suggested this to other students also during the classes that uh, you can maintain two word documents the first word document would be for uh, all the major concepts covered in each booklet you will see that many questions their uh, framework the pattern they follow in their answers is very similar so for those questions you can make a sample framework answer and in case a similar topic comes in the examination then you can use that framework and just alter the point for ii students also you can just simply memorize the framework and understand the flow so that in the examination when you see a similar question you know that yes i have done this before and i know how to go about it the other uh, document which you all can maintain is basically a keyword bank because uh, that will be like uh, if you all have seen the revision notes at the end there are some things called the mind maps now those mind maps maybe you all don't refer to them or maybe you all are not understanding what it is it is basically like a point generation tank over there you just throw out words which are related to that particular topic or that particular uh, chapter and then uh, whenever a question comes you think about those words and you see if that particular word relates to it so for example a word as simple as taxation now uh, if any question comes it is natural that taxation may not be a point which comes to your mind because it is not such an obvious point but if you see that point and then you start thinking about it then you will definitely find a way to link taxation to your answer so that is how you are able to generate more points once you think you've exhausted your thinking capacity you can refer to that list or you can think of that list and then you can try and add more points for example or uh, some even complex words like cross subsidizing cross subsidizing is again something a concept which may be new to many of you in the cp1 examination so uh, that concept may not come to you when you are giving the exam but if you have that word in front of you then you will definitely think on those lines okay okay so uh, what is the apt time to uh, basically study the content like uh, what do you feel that, that like recently the students they have some misconceptions that this is a shorter term and the april term is a longer term but eventually mm -hmm. they don't realize that uh, in the uh, like it's almost 6 6 months right and in the april attempt uh, they will be having 
uh, more of vacation type like christmas is there diwali is there holi is there and all the festivals are there again there is a shadi shadi season so definitely it's almost the same whichever attempt they are giving so how much time is required to basically prepare the course so uh, of course you are very right that it does seem that september to april time is a longer time to study but we don't realize there is a lot of idle time or a lot of abnormal loss of time because uh, there are the festivals uh, you have so many vacations you have so many social commitments but so eventually it all boils down to the same period of study time and april to september is nearly 5 months in itself which is not very less i feel 5 months is more than enough time to prepare for ct1 because the thing is that even though the content is very big if you stick with something for too long then you end up just uh, taking it very casually if today you start and you think you have let's say four and a half months then you will think ki theek hai char char mahina hai aaram se we will do no when you are on a deadline then you work more efficiently you will study more efficiently and you will know that uh, daily you have to give it that much amount of time if you have a long time then you are okay with uh, having some break days which for some people may not be a good thing because then your consistency breaks and in this paper the most important thing is the consistency if you are not consistent with your preparation if daily you are not giving at least some time to the content then you will not be able to retain it properly and then you will not be able to uh, cover the entire course also properly so okay. i think that for completing the content 10 to 12 weeks is enough which means i am uh, mentally allotting and on an average one week for booklet for some booklets you will be done in half a week also and for the rest you might take one and a half week okay so uh, since you talked about 10 booklets so can you please uh, throw some light on what all areas are covered in the uh, cp1 examination and uh, like since uh, we discussed it few times that it's totally uh, uh, not totally that it's biased towards some of the particular topics right so can you please throw some light on that sure so uh, the 10 booklets they are covered very nicely as in uh, the topics are concrete and uh, ordered in a nice manner so that you don't face any issues going back and forth so the first booklet is the actuarial control cycle and uh, in general actuarial advice next we come to uh, external environment etc after that we start with uh, the insurance products the gi products life insurance products as well as the investment products available in the market after that we come to investment markets investment strategies etc then we have a uh, modeling in that we have different chapters like uh, pertaining to data assumption the modeling process we have uh, chapters on provisions capital uh, capital provisioning capital management and then we have surplus management in the middle the biggest portion is on risk and in fact that is the booklet which i feel ct1 is definitely more biased so because as you all know the actuarial science course is made to manage risk so naturally they focus a lot on those few chapters on risk in uh, both the papers paper 1 as well as paper 2 you will definitely find questions you will definitely find let's say on 30 to 40% of your paper just from these two portions that is including risk identification management classification uh, risk management techniques all kinds of them and reporting so that portion i would definitely say do well plus that is also the portion where you can actually use your creativity in uh, you will see in the past papers there are questions like risks for this project risks for that project directly for 8 marks 10 marks 12 marks there is no end so here you can apply your creativity and see what all risks you just have to uh, let's say make a, take a mental image of the scenario given to you and then you can uh, just think what all can go wrong in that particular project and for preparation also what i also did was you can uh, talk to your peers you can talk to people at home this is something which everyone can connect to if you go and ask your parents also that if a toll road is being constructed what all do you think can be the risk so they can give you some inputs which maybe wouldn't have struck you 
because they have seen uh, practical uh, things in their practical life as well so in that way you can discuss and broaden your uh, viewpoints okay okay so uh, since as you mentioned uh, in, in the initial uh, talk that uh, yeah definitely we'll come back to the q and a session just after few of my questions first so uh, since you mentioned that there are 39 chapters right so mm -hmm. like how do you feel you you mentioned 4 to 5 months so uh, how do you feel a student can cover these uh, 39 chapters and most of them those who are working right and uh, like they have a 8 to 10 hours of job so how much time devotion on a daily basis do you think is sufficient and uh, just can you break the mind barrier that uh, like it looks like it's 39 chapters but what what is in it actually matlab so so how to cover okay so of course this is a very common problem with uh, most students that uh, how to cover such a such an overwhelming syllabus but as i said it is not too much when you go through it uh, you don't have to think of it as 39 chapters it is better to think of it as 10 sections because each section in itself uh, you can treat as a single chapter and most of the chapters out of the 39 will be uh, things which you have already studied in your past uh, papers things which you have if you are working since this is a bigger problem for the people who are working actually it is a paper which is somewhat easier which means ki the people who are working have a slight edge over the people who are not because uh, as i said it's an actual practice paper so you have actually sat and made models you have actually sat with clients and advised them you have uh, seen the different investment products available you have dealt with them so you all know what happens in the market in general so don't think of it as 39 chapters from the first day itself just think of it as 10 sections and make targets also with respect to the sections instead of the chapters because the sections are uh, more or less equally divided in some sections you will see for example there is uh, one section on provisions and liabilities etc that section consists of 6 to 7 chapters but uh, at the same time there are a few sections which just consist of let's say the uh, last two sections it is just two chapters or a single chapter so now uh, you have to realize that that one chapter which comprises an entire section and those 67 chapters that comprise an entire section are actually the same thing those 6 to 7 chapters will not take much of much of your time because you will be dealing with topics like a discounted cash flow method or uh, what are the factors affecting investment strategy or what are the uh, reasons for maintaining provision so these are things which are actual and students come very naturally to us you don't have to sit and learn discounted cash flow method or market value method or historical value method so that's why it just looks like 39 chapters the entire uh, the book set the material set looks very overwhelming but the content in it is actually just a synopsis of whatever you have done in your past actual science journey okay so since you mentioned work experience so what do you think how relevant is work experience uh, to approach the paper so as i said uh, people with work experience do have a slight edge but uh, people who don't have any work experience or are just students till now uh, there is no reason for them to not perform well in fact even when i appeared for the paper i did not have any work experience in this field so what i instead did was that a uh, portion where i felt for example like i said in the initial few chapters you have a uh, portion on the different uh, products the different insurance products as well as the different investment products so what i did was i spoke to some seniors i spoke to sir i spoke to shivangi ma'am uh, and then other uh, students also who have been working some of my friends who are working and they helped me get a real life view on those topics for example i have i was in uh, connect with someone who is currently working in life insurance at a very high level so i scheduled a 30 minute call with her so that she could explain the working of all the life insurance products then i uh, spoke to a person who is in the gi sector and i just asked him how the products actually work what they do in office so in that way even if you give a little time to these things you can uh, read about the uh, current affairs in general what is happening then you will see there are questions 
coming on the use of let's say telematics the use of smart watches the uh, climate change etc so these are things as much as you read as much as you would talk to other people who have knowledge about the th- uh, about these topics your viewpoint will broaden and you will find it easier to uh, deliver to such answers okay so which all areas do you think a student should strengthen to perform better in this exam so the most important thing which i always say even to um, my family members used to ask me what was this paper about you have to sit like a think tank in the examination and just make sure you are sitting with a very open mind so that you can think of as many things you can whatever is your capacity you have to think to the max and uh, strengthening as i said read a lot any term you come across while studying any term you come across while doing the content or maybe in the revision notes some terms which the examiners have mentioned if you are not aware of that term ask them during the classes uh, one of the faculties will help you or else you can simply google those terms and read a little about them maybe you will not uh, increase any knowledge maybe you will just read whatever you already knew but once you read something again then it sits in your mind very well and plus you will think that okay if i knew about this topic then i will have the confidence that in the examination any word i am thrown with uh, i will be able to solve it so those portions are very important to strengthen don't think that you have to focus a lot on memorizing you have to focus on understanding each and every thing and relating things together okay so uh, basically since uh, we together and along with some industry experts which currently were involving in this exam prep so how do you think that uh, the students should make full use uh, of uh, this exam program that we are offering so the most important thing in the uh, in getting enrolled in a program would be the consistency uh most people who appear for this paper are working as we discussed so for them it is important that even if they are let's say tired by the end of the or if they are going through a busy phase in their offices then it is important that even then they give at least an hour to the cp1 preparation so that is very easy to give if you have a schedule to follow or if you have someone standing on your head to say that this is your target for this week and anyhow you have to complete it of course it will not be possible to meet each and every target but at least at the back of your mind at some point you will cope with those targets and that will help a lot so even if you watch let's say one class a day or if you just attend the live sessions that will also aid your preparation uh, the discussion which we hold during the class so if you watch our recorded sessions then you will realize that the cp1 content is not something which has to be explained most of us already know the content what is important is we discuss and we generate more points we um, try and look at the same problem from different angles there will always be points which are not there in the revision notes or the material but during the discussion we will come up with points that are also valid and please remember that there is no right or wrong in this paper whatever you write as long as you explain it logically as long as it makes sense to the examiner you will get the marks even in okay. the examiner's reports you will see that it is written that marks were given for other relevant points they are not saying that you have to write whatever they have written okay so what is the importance of mock exams that we take uh, for the iia and ifoa students so what should be the student approach uh, for giving mocks so mock exams again a very important thing the papers nowadays in the recent terms are coming extremely long it is very difficult to complete the papers in the stipulated time limit most of the students they are ending up not being able to attempt the entire paper so it is important that you appear for the mock examination even after the mocks it is possible that maybe you do not complete the paper but i can assure you you will definitely be better off than the ones who did not appear for the mock examination for uh, ifoa your typing speed will matter a lot you have to type around 45 to 4500 to 5000 words for a 3 hr examination 100 marks examination 
so that is a lot because you have to think those words and then type them so you, uh, once you appear for the mocks definitely three mocks i would suggest everyone should appear for them we provide around six mocks per paper so even if you're not appearing for all six maybe you can have time constraints the, that you cannot sit for 3 hours and give a paper but three mocks you must give the other three you should try and uh, do by yourself even if you're not typing it it is fine but you should definitely uh, generate the answers by yourself that is important but for the typing in in the three mocks if you feel that your typing speed hasn't been uh, to them up to the mark then you should definitely do the other three as well uh, completely sitting for 3 hours 15 minutes 3 hours 20 minutes sorry and do your paper for uh, iia students again it is important even though you all have the uh, chance of writing it on pen and paper but still the papers are long you have to think of the points so you must appear for the mocks okay so uh, one student has asked a query that uh, how to do the revision of the older topics because this problem i have also faced like uh, once we start moving towards booklet 4 5 and 6 we tend to forget uh, booklet 1 2 3 content so what strategy okay. did you adopt for this so for this uh, what i did was uh, since i had very little time personally i completed the 10 booklets first and then i went back to the first booklet but that, this is not something i would suggest to you all because of course this is an issue because it was like i was starting from scratch so what i would suggest is once you are done with around 4 to 5 booklets you start giving 3 hours a week just 3 hours a week to revise the older content it is not necessary that you do the entire question again but since you are just 5 booklets ahead it means that some of it is still in your head so even if you just skim through it quickly do a quick revision then or uh, you will be good to go so in when you're doing your fifth booklet in that week if you give 3 hours to the first booklet then in the sixth booklet you give 3 hours to the second booklet in that way by the time you have reached your 10th booklet you have also revised booklet 5 okay so that okay. is something you can try okay so uh, one more question that a uh, uh, student anubhav has asked is uh, how how useful you think are the acronyms like for example these are present at the back of the revision notes mm-hmm. so how useful you think are the acronyms for the exam so uh, for ifoa again since it's an open book examination and whatever notes you will be preparing you will have access to your notes so for ifo students they are not that important they are important at the stage where you are preparing your notes make sure you incorporate the acronyms in your notes so that during the exam there is just one thing you have to uh, refer to it is not possible as i said the exams are very long so it is not possible to refer to open 10 books and sit but in your notes while studying you can refer to those 10 books and make a synopsized version of your entire uh, preparation for ias students the acronyms are extremely important because uh, they eventually help you memorize and retain the points so definitely for ias students acronyms are very important okay okay so any student who would like to ask a quick question with ma'am uh, any student i'll give preference to ias students because they are having their exams recently so any student who would like to ask anything ruchita shivangi how I'm to prepare <laughs> like she she is preparing so uh, like how yes, how what should be the strategy in the last uh, 15 days so uh, i hope you have started giving mocks for sure so in your this is actually the ideal time when you should give your mocks so that you have enough time to review your mocks as well as uh, make up for any points where you were lacking so definitely give mocks if you haven't till now and then after that whatever questions in the revision notes which you had marked go through those questions and go through the chapter summaries at the end of each chapter the chapter summaries they are uh, enough to cover the entire chapter so okay. that is important okay okay so thank you so much that the it was very insightful and uh, definitely uh, you will be taking some of the classes uh, just from next week onwards so thank you so much thank you all of you okay